Thanks for tuning in to episode 28 of the Move Mind podcast. This is the first podcast I've recorded outside, so if you can hear that lovely bird song in the background, that is why. So this episode I wanted to talk about the skill set of thinking critically and many factors to do with this topic, the difference between thinking critically and critical thinking. Why is it an important skill? How can you learn it? A course that I did recently to learn this skill and then a bit of a review around this course as to why I think you should take it and some of the benefits you'll get from from signing up. So let's get straight into it. What is thinking critically and why might it be an important skill set? So I'm actually going to take a definition taken from the course that I recently enrolled in. Being able to think critically means being able to repeatedly apply a process of thinking towards information that helps you judge whether it's really of any use or not. Okay, so thinking critically is a systematic approach, more or less, of applying certain methods to a piece of information to ensure that you're not being biased when you take in that piece of information. I actually think thinking critically is probably one of the most important skills you could ever learn not just if you're an S&C coach or physiotherapist, personal trainer or sports coach, skills coach, but just for life in general, for making well-informed decisions around the age of information that we now live in. Everything's so instant and shit information, false information seems to spread even faster than decent information. So learning how to sift that shit from the gold, I think is vital. This wasn't a skill set that was taught to me in school, I think it should be taught in schools. Very often it's only really a skill set that's employed in the sort of higher education realm when you start to read for a degree. But I think this skill set is easier to learn than what is required to read for a degree and should be taught much earlier. And I wish I was able to learn this much earlier in life. But recently I enrolled on a course on how to do that, which I'll get to a little bit later and give a little bit of review on, on that course. But it's a vital life skill. So it's a method of applying pragmatism, if you like, towards information or discarding the information if it's useless. So is there a difference then between critical thinking and thinking critically? For the sake of this podcast, we're going to say yes, there is. Even though there's a lot of overlap, the terms are often used interchangeably. Let's just make sure we're on the same page. So we defined thinking critically as the the process of going through information systematically to see if it's of any use or not. Critical thinking then is actually a school of philosophy, arguably started by Socrates with his Socratic questioning, Socratic dialogue, asking the right questions to get more truthful answers or get you closer to the truth. And then there's been many philosophical kind of thinkers and leaders in that area ever since the age of Socrates. Obviously Plato was his student and then Aristotle was his student and then it's gone on all the way up to John Dewey sort of in the 20th century uh, as the like, most recent kind of person if you like figurehead for the critical thinking school. So we're not actually talking about the school of philosophy with critical thinking although it's well worth researching and learning about. We're going to be talking about the actual process of thinking critically for the rest of this episode. So why bother to learn the skill of thinking critically? If we live in an age of information, surely half that information is decent and we just take it on board. Well, that's not the case. As you and I both know, in the age of social media, marketing is far more powerful than the actual quality and content of information. So just because someone has 400,000 followers, is ripped, has some celebrity clients, doesn't necessarily mean that they're advocating squatting with their knees going well over their toes, for example, should be taken seriously. How do you know if someone's got that many thousands of followers or looks the part if actually what they're saying is correct factually? Do we just take it on face value? In some professions, to take knowledge like that, or information I should say like that, and apply it, just at face value can lose you your job. So I think it's super important to be able to sift through and see what is valuable, but also for your own decision-making process. Contemporary knowledge often has a poor track record of diluting itself the more popular it gets. 
should we then be taking that knowledge that's been diluted and using it to make decisions in our lives? I'm not so sure. I think actually being able to think critically is, is massive in, in making decisions. So I think ignorance is bliss, but it leads to an unexamined life, which is arguably miserable. In order to inquire, in order to learn, in order to grow as people, we need to be able to think critically about the information that's in front of us. And then ultimately, like Bruce Lee said so well, absorb what is useful and discard what isn't. The only way you can do that is by thinking critically through information that comes your way. Some professions that might benefit from thinking critically, some of you listening may fall into these categories. For f personal trainers, I think thinking critically is huge, mostly because the educational faculty around being a personal trainer is so poor. If you are able to think critically, there's a wealth of information out there through books and other coaches and webinars, etc., that you can get hold of, go through them, see if it's useful and pragmatic for your clients, and then employ that knowledge to ultimately better serve your clients. Similarly, if you're a strength and conditioning coach, and you're in charge of a team whose net worth of their hamstrings alone is more than your house and your car, and you see something on Instagram or YouTube that you think might be cool for that team and you implement it with that, without thinking critically at all about that information, and you injure that team or a member of that team, you lose your job, right? So you can't just dive in in the world of strength and conditioning on random pieces of information and just apply them and hope for the best. You need a much better process than that. Similarly, part of your job as an S&C coach is to keep up with the literature to a degree, to keep up with the studies. You need to be able to go through those studies and see if they were conducted effectively. Were they using people that had trained before or not trained before? What was the context of the study? What were the results of the study? Are the results of that study applicable to your athletes or people that you work with? So as an S&C coach, it's massive to be able to think critically. And in my realm, especially in jiu-jitsu, and combining the relatively uncharted territories of strength and conditioning in the jiu-jitsu world, in order to apply things that might have been researched or been successful in other areas of strength and conditioning for other combat sports, wrestling for example, I want to be able to think critically about that information and see how could it apply to jiu-jitsu athletes and obviously to myself because I'm in that category too. So, massive benefits for the strength and conditioning coach to be able to think critically as well. Physiotherapists, okay, I've had plenty of physio treatment over the years all over the world and if I had to guess based on anecdotal evidence alone I'd say they'd all gone through completely differing levels of education. The quality control was almost non-existent, some have been great, some are absolutely awful and the prices have been, you know, not necessarily reflective of that either. If you're a physiotherapist, you want to better serve your patients. That involves being able to think critically again about the studies and about the information that's available on what treatments may or may not benefit the people that you work with and, and serve. Now you'll notice a common theme here, personal training, strength and conditioning, physiotherapy. The goal is to better serve the person you're working with ultimately. Yes, to inform yourself too. And great if you can use that on your own body especially if you're not in any one of these fields. But if you are a coach, a physio, personal trainer, it's your duty, in my opinion, to deliver the best possible service. Not average, not average service, not stuff you've just seen on the internet and you think, oh yeah, that would be cool to try this week. No, that's bullshit. To deliver top quality service and ultimately better serve those people so that they can get better at what they're doing or heal if in the clinical context. You need to be able to think critically about the information that's out there and sift out all the crap. So with that in mind then, how do you actually go about learning to think critically? Because if you have biases like I do with certain things, how can you jump outside of your own biased parentheses to see information for what it really is? Now I think that's quite difficult to do on your own, although I do think you could do it reading textbooks and doing exercises, etc. However, I'm going to suggest something much easier, arguably cheaper, and probably more effective. And that is to enrol on a course under the guidance of someone who knows how to teach thinking critically as a skill. Now I enrolled on a specific course for this 
very objective recently and it's been absolutely fantastic. I'd actually say it's go, I'd go as far as to say it's game changing, these, these skills that were involved in this course. The course was called Navigating the Grey Area and I think it's a fantastic name because in the world of misinformation and information that we live in, there's a massive grey area to navigate, especially in the realm of S&C, but just in making decisions in life in general. We live in a, a beautiful and bizarre time, probably highlighted recently by the COVID era, that not everything is what it seems on the surface. And having a critical eye is, is that, is actually, it's vital, it's critical. So I enrolled on Navigating the Grey Area. It's an eight week course and it is put together by Dave Allenson, who is a strength and conditioning coach based in Sheffield in the United Kingdom. And the reason Dave is a great coach for this topic is because he actually spent a lot of time in academia as a history teacher and in the school sector in the United Kingdom. Uh, and in order to be a history teacher, he had to go through the higher education process I alluded to earlier of learning how to basically go and research sources and pieces of information and find out if this is legitimate or not. Also studied philosophy on that path. He has a great understanding of what it means to think critically, how to teach it to teens, youngsters, and then now has put together a course navigating the gray area, which works really well in the industries of physiotherapy, personal training, strength and conditioning, arguably even combat sports to a degree. So the course is eight weeks and the way the course is structured is each week there is a certain set of skills and exercises to be completed in the homework. So it goes like this. You have a PDF that Dave sends you that outlines the skill and then he makes a video that goes into a little bit more depth explaining that skill, the context of that skill, let's say, how to apply it, etc. Then there's a homework assignment so you go and do the homework assignment across the week and then a video is pinged back to everyone in the in the course on feedback on that assignment and that's how it continues every week builds on the next the pace of the course is fantastic it's very manageable whether you're a father of three or you're running a business or you're fighting and competing or like me you were moving countries halfway through the course it's very manageable to keep up with the pace. It's perfect, actually. Regardless of your academic background or not, it's not important. Dave does a great job of laying it out to be very simple in layman's terms. Unfortunately, when you learn skills in academia, very often they don't cross over to the layman because it's just too dry, too confusing, and ultimately too boring. Dave does a great job of shaping it and reforming it into a way where the skill set isn't diminished or diluted, but you can understand what he's talking about and it's straightforward. The homework assignments stretch your brain. They are not straightforward. I consider myself to be a good thinker, but until recently a biased one. And undoing those biases by going through these assignments was very powerful and took me some time. It didn't, it didn't come overnight. You have to practice these, these skills. So the pace is very manageable. The structure is fantastic. And the, the winning part, I think, is it's so cheap. It's 100 quid for eight weeks. A lot of that money Dave donates to charity. And what an affordable price for a skill set that arguably is going to be a cornerstone of your professional development if you're a coach, but also enable you to make decisions clearly for the rest of your life. Absolute bargain, in my opinion. So it's a five star review from me for the course, Navigating the Grey Area. Absolutely, I recommend you sign up for it immediately. At the time of recording of this podcast, Dave is currently running the course again, but there's always options to sign up. Foundations Performance on Instagram, Dave Allenson. Get in touch with him, register yourself for the next available course. It's all done digitally. You can do it through a mobile phone even. You can get Discord and YouTube, you know, through your phone. and you know, some sort of note-taking software on there, a note-taking app. You can do it through iPad, laptop, pen and paper, however you want to do it. But it's super versatile, super applicable, 
and I wouldn't hesitate. I really wouldn't. I would go and book onto that. Dave's actually going to come on the show in the next couple of episodes, and we're going to go deeper into the skill set of thinking critically, which I'm very excited about. Amongst other things, I really want to pick his brains on his approaches to learning for jiu-jitsu, for example, with ideas around space repetition and interleaving, learning not being a linear process, etc. And then picking his brains more on SNC, SNC for combat athletes, and then what it was like to transition out of an academic world, out from being a school teacher, history teacher, all the way into now being an SNC coach. So he's a fascinating chap, Dave. I've got a lot of time for him. Great coach, a very clever guy, and I'm sure that conversation will be fantastic. So make sure you tune into that. If you've enjoyed this episode, please let me know. If you've got any questions for Dave, feel free to get in touch through Instagram at MoveMind and just let me know what you want me to ask him. I hope this episode has been insightful. Book yourself on to navigating the grey area. You won't regret it. Thinking critically is one of the best investments you can make, I promise. Thanks for listening and I'll catch you next time.